So I don't know if at time of recording this video is out yet, but I made a video, I recorded a video where I talked about my experience getting the Rahi Beast book and just how transformative that was for me. Now, today, I have designed far more Rahi than appear in that book, even within the appendix itself. And so I figured as a sort of like premier Rahi designer, I guess, the master Rahi designer, no, I don't call myself that, but why not judge those mocks? Why not judge the Fanon Rahi in the Rahi Beast book. And I'm going to do this in the form of a tier list. So if you enjoy that type of content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It helps the channel out. It continues this channel growing, chugging along in the right direction. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into it. So we're going to hop on over here to tier maker. And I have uploaded 19, 19 Rahi or actually all of the Rahi submitted to this book that were fan creations. Surprising. I really thought it was more, but the book is also filled out with a lot of creations from Lego themselves. And I opted to keep that as its own separate video because I'd like to do a tier list of all of Lego's Rahi as well. But that said, we're going to start off right here in alphabetical order. And we're starting with the archive mole. This is not one that I have ever built before, but I've seen it built and I, as a kid, didn't really care for it too much seeing it in the book, but having seen it built, having seen a couple of little things, little techniques built inside of the body, I actually think it's pretty good overall. Now, I don't know the ages or the experience of any of the designers of these sets. I picked these up over on Bio Sector 1 if you want to check them out for yourself, but I think this one's a pretty good solid middle of the road mock. I love the combination of the brown and black. It's very simple. It's tried and true. It works out. I'm going to throw this right here in the B tier. How am I ranking these? Honestly, it's vibes, guys. It's vibes. Whatever I think looks the best, feels the best, and sort of incorporates design the best, or that I've wanted to build myself or even have built myself. Those are probably going to be my favorite, but you know, time has definitely aged some of these more than others. Next up, we have the Artaka Bowl, and that is another one I think is pretty good overall, incorporating a handful of different colors of brown and, of course, a little bit of gray in there as well. I think overall, it's a pretty good model, centaur type model, so sort of a mythical creature if you want to see it that way. This one's not one that I've been as into wanting to build, so I'm going to put this one in the C tier category. Going to go real hard on it, right? Uh, that said, next up, we have the Blade Burrower, and I'm trying to remember all of these names just off the cuff here, but this one is definitely an interesting one. I've never built it, though, and I've never wanted to build it, which is interesting, not because I think it's bad. It just hasn't ever done anything that truly excited me. For that reason alone, I think I'm going to also throw this one into the C tier because I've never really grown more fond of it in the way I have with the Archive Mole. But next up, we have the Catapult Scorpion. And this one right off the bat is probably going up into, honestly, I want to say S tier. It is amongst the best of the best in this wave here, in this series of mocks. And I have built this one, though it has been well over 15 years at this point, and I did it just for from images so probably got some stuff wrong but it is a very solid aesthetically pleasing model moving on to the next one we have the crystal climber and this one's definitely an interesting one i like what they're doing in the arms here with the gears adding a little bit of almost like fur on the side of the arms which is the way i like to see it and although that is a fairly common technique now it wasn't actually that common back when these sets were being made for that reason i actually want to give it a b i think the head design on it is pretty inspired as well very reminiscent of the terracaba and i don't know if it's supposed to be a lizard or a mammal or what exactly it's trying to invoke but it is interesting at the very least next up we have the dermis turtle which while cute while kind of interesting looking the the weird sort of coloration of it the sort of ambiguous head this one for me is going to go in the d tier and yes i'm going to make a lot of enemies for that because i think that is some people's favorite in, in in all honesty it's kind of got that derpy thing going on and i like it for that reason but i don't really like it for much else i have built this one as well i did figure out the build for it for somebody else they asked me to reverse engineer it and it was definitely a uh, fun and definitely kind of a challenge i was surprised with the, some of the techniques that were used in there but i think the end result it just isn't the most exciting however i think it's pretty close and you could get something a lot more exciting out of it with existing pieces that said we've got the doom viper 
And this one to me, kind of the same story. The interesting use of all the different rock she heads is really cool. Love the idea of a sort of Hydra like creature like this, but I think the execution is just kind of mediocre at best for me. That's just my opinion though. And it is all subjective at the end of the day. So I'm going to throw this one probably into the C tier, if only for the sole reason that it's because someone had to at least get all six rock she to build this. And I can admire that at least some. So next we have the fatter bowl. And are we not sure that Christian Faber didn't build this himself. No, uh, Fader, F-A-D-E-R. <laughs> so definitely a different name, but I do like this one. Really like the combination of colors, the white and black. Of course, a little bit of use of silver in here, grays as well. So it's definitely that sort of monochromatic coloration. Using the white Picari, just showing off like that in the early 2000s is definitely something I can adore as well. And actually using the, uh, Toa Mata Torso in this way, I find really fascinating because it's a hard piece to use in all honesty. I've only used it in a handful of my own mocks. I think just one rock, uh, Rahi, maybe two. And so because of that, I want to go ahead and actually throw this into the A tier. I really admire the parts use on that. Next up, we have the Frost Beetle. And to me, it's not really an insect looking creature, though I don't really know what is, but I can ignore the name. I don't even know if they got to name it or if Lego gave these names. That said, though, aesthetically, it is pretty cool and using white as a color seems to be pretty rare on these at least as a primary color i think this is actually one of my favorites from the from the from the book but i've never built it myself for that reason i'm going to go ahead and give this one an a as well we have the furnace salamander using my personal favorite weapon from bionicle the air katanas in silver and dark orange love it love to see it this one, that said, I do like the sort of gangly aesthetic it's going for, that spindly look, and it almost looks very... I don't know. I don't want to say demonic. That's not the right word, but something kind of like that. There's something off about it, something very unsettling about its appearance. I want to give this one a B, throwing it up right into the middle of the midst, right? All right, we get to the legend, the amazing Kanohi Dragon. Okay, honestly... <laughs> I've never been tempted to build it, and I do think it's kind of messy. I will say, I do admire what they're doing with the fingers there, with the uh, Matoran hammer pieces. That's a really fun use of those pieces. I don't really care for it. I never have. It's big. I can admire that. It's not that exciting for me, guys, but hey, maybe that rating will change. Maybe I need to build a Kanohi dragon for myself, and maybe that needs to be something to be shown on this channel. That said, we've got the Metru Mantis here, and it's a fairly simple build, although again, it is doing some interesting things. If I remember correctly, there's actually a slightly illegal technique being used in this build, which I can always admire, right? And I do like it. This one has a very striking appearance, in my opinion, and it's just, there's, there's something that feels right about it, you know? It, it, again, it's probably one of the most straightforward builds that's going to go into the S tier, but it's going into the S tier for me. Next up, we've got the Phase Dragon, which is, again, not one that I've personally wanted to build, but this one, I think, has a lot more going for it, in my opinion. There are definitely aspects of it that I think could be improved with my own skill set or with, you know, more modern parts with more uh, people having more experience, more Machus having years of experience at this point. For that reason, I'm going to go ahead and put this one in the B tier, and hopefully, maybe one day, I will go ahead and take on this build for myself and modify it in a way that feels exciting for me. Love the combination of standard green with the dark orange again, and Again, those are my favorite weapons from Bionicle, so gotta, gotta show some respect here, right? Moving on, we're going to the uh, Proto Drake. Almost forgot that one here. I do have a list here in the background, just in case I do forget the name. So the Proto Drake is definitely an interesting one, and it's interesting in a couple of ways, most notably because, again, it's such a sort of abstract creation. Like, I can generally see what they're going for in the design here. And although this is not one that I've ever really wanted to build for myself, I think I have given it a try anyway in the past. I don't think it's necessarily going for anything too unique, but I do think all told and in its presentation, it's a pretty good one overall. I'm going to put this one in the B tier as well. Next one we have is the Razor Whale. Not my personal favorite, although I do think that standard green does not get nearly as much love as it deserves. It's definitely an interesting one, but it's sort of formulaic in a lot of the ways it uses its parts. That's not a bad thing, obviously. You're very limited in the parts that were available this early on as well. 
well. I think with this one, I'm going to go ahead and throw it in the C tier. I think it's decent. Not my favorite by any means. Next, we have the Silver Toot Spider. And this one is definitely one that I'm excited for because I have loved the build for this for such a long time. And I have built this myself again. The very first time I built it was with my own collection. I remember being super excited when my friend brought over one of those accessory tubs because it meant I could trade them for those Nuju weapons because I didn't have them. I never had Nuju growing up as a Toa Metru, right? So I wanted them so I could build this exact thing. This is absolutely going the S tier, if only for my own memories of the set itself but i think it's a pretty striking and pretty good set overall next up spiny stone ape and honestly what can i say i have built this one i do think it is a set that benefits a little bit from a few modifications it is fairly top heavy in its build and it also uses the mata torso to really good effect on the interior as well if you've not built it yourself i'd highly recommend looking up the instructions for it or even trying to go about uh recreating it yourself or reverse engineering it that can be a lot of fun too and i really encourage people to reverse engineer more if only because it helps you to sort of get familiar with parts and how they can be used in really new and engaging ways next up we have the tatarok interestingly this one getting more of a bionicle feeling name i don't know if that's because this was the winner of the rahi contest or not not really sure why it got that name specifically that said i think a lot more people hold this one up to higher regard than i personally do although granted i do have the bootleg lime green air katanas and i could absolutely make it with a lime green frill so like that is tempting maybe it's something i will do in the future that said i think it's still a decent build for sure does a similar thing with the mata torsos in the well in the body build itself to sort of lengthen the build and i think that makes some sense gonna throw this one in the a tier i could definitely see it verging on b tier but i've got to give it a little bit of extra credit at the very least for if nothing else winning the rahi contest and having a few interesting connections in there the head build is pretty inspired too and lastly here, we have the Vaki Hunter, which again, I've never been a huge fan of. Can absolutely tell that this was somebody who got one of those accessory packs, so because I do believe a lot of these parts come in those accessory tubs. Could be wrong. I'll definitely have to look it up. It's interesting. There are some interesting things going on, but I think it doesn't go into anything truly unique or specific. It's kind of a mess, and that's okay. Sometimes we love a mess. I'm a mess sometimes. All good. I'm going to throw this one, though, in the D tier. So this is where we stand currently. Overall, I think the Rahi Beast book is a good sort of signifier, if nothing else, to what Bionicle has to offer. And again, it's such a huge part of my childhood, if only because it was like the first piece of Bionicle content I went out of my way to get. And the story about that is fairly fun, but I will save that one for another day, again, if I haven't posted it already. So with all that being said, that's it for this video. So I hope you guys like this video. And of course, if you like these tier lists, let me know too, because I'm more than happy to do more content like this one. I do have more ideas, but of course I try to space out videos like this. So that's not what the channel just becomes, right? I enjoy all kinds of things. So this is one of those things. That said though, again, like and subscribe helps. And of course, as always, Discord, Instagram, and Patreon are all linked in the description. Each of them help out the channel. And as always, see you in the next one. Take care.